Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. And today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different because I've been testing some different toys and a strange ink in particular, which I'm going to talk about. See you shortly. Before getting on to the different types of highlighter I use, this is a Rhodia pad and this is a pad I started out testing my inks on. It's 90 GSM and I started with the inks which I have subsequently recorded separately because I thought it would be interesting to have a look at them all in this pad. You can see a certain amount of the variety of colours here. The sunshine yellow certainly on in real life looks much more yellow than it shows up on this camera's screen so I'm hoping this isn't an unrealistic display but I'm showing these because these I started testing and then I thought wouldn't it be interesting to have a look at some of the other inks now the thing is that I tried testing these and I am never in a million years going to use them look at that peach haze it is rather insipid, rather sickly to my eye. And then there's Coral, which is quite good as a highlighting ink, perhaps. Not an ink I would want to keep in a pen for very long. Pink is, well, just shocking, really. And yes, it would work well as a highlighter, as would Hope Pink, which is... I actually tried writing a few pages with this once, and it was really hard on the eyes. <laughs> Flamingo pink, oh, no, 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 and Cerise, no, not for me. Pumpkin's not bad, and then I've got some dazzling inks too, so I've got Brandy Dazzle here. I've got Red Luster, which really shows up well here, you can see. I'm not too sure how well the writing shows its sparkle. Magical Forest, again, really rather lovely. And that's about it. So I just wanted to show them briefly before going on to show you what I've got out for your delectation today. And the first thing I would say is when I tend to use highlighters, some time ago I gave up using highlighter pens that you normally have with the big fat fibre chisel type tip because I never used to use them fast enough. I'd find that in six months the damn things would dry out and every time I wanted to use it again it was dead. So some time ago, thank you cult pens, I discovered the Faber-Castell text liner. Now it's a big fat crayon but it has a couple of really good advantages. This is something you don't often see. This is me using a biro. Admittedly, it is a lovely cross biro. But I'm doing this purely for speed over the lazy dog. Because I don't have to wait for this to dry at all. OK, there we go. Simple thing. Now what I really like about this highlighter is that you can highlight straight over things. And you can see it smudges with a biro. Be aware of that. It doesn't smudge written ink. In fact, I could, of course, go back and find a bit of dark writing to highlight. Let's just go with this. This will do. Let's highlight Rhodia. You can see how effective that is. Really, really bright very good colour. They also do an orange and a blue and I think a pink. I've tried all of them. This seems to work far far better. Not because of the colour but because the crayon itself seems to be a bit softer so it highlights much more easily. So that's interesting. Now what was I going to talk about today? Well, I finally got round to it. It's this. A delightful fellow Chris Curtis sent me this. And I've been testing it recently. I'm going next week to give talks on Agatha Christie and various other writers. 
and I thought it would be useful for my researches to use some highlighting. And I haven't had a chance to use this ink before, but I thought I would try it now. Look at this. This is a 1.1 stub, but this highlighter is not as good, I don't think, as the Faber-Castell when you're going straight over something. But what it is superb at is highlighting by just underlining or anything else. It is wonderful. I'm really, really hugely impressed. I like this lots. It's much easier to write with than this. And you can see it really does work stunningly well. This I have been using now for a few days. You know, if you're using a highlighter, you don't tend to use a huge amount because you're just highlighting straight lines. I've used up half of this pen though already. I, I am finding it absolutely wonderful. This is really good. It does highlight. It shows up very well on paper. But this stuff really does seem to be fluorescent or luminous. It really does leap off the page when you're writing it. So if you've got some research to do, I can thoroughly recommend Pelican's M205 Duo. And thanks a lot to Chris for sending it through to me. I really appreciate that. Right. So now you know what I think about luminous inks. Very fascinating things indeed. I still wonder if it's going to stain, but I don't care. I might well just keep this pen for using luminous inks. It seems to be a very good idea. If you enjoyed that, please go down to the bottom. There's a Patreon link. You can go and help fund this site if you want to. There's also the comment section for any questions or comments that you've got. Do please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, hit the share button, hit the, all of those things. And I'll speak to you soon. Meantime, I'm going to enjoy a cup of tea. Take care. Cheers. Oh, that is nice.